My name is Jenny Marie. I'm 28 years old. I am a mother of two, and I'm currently living with non-specific interstitial lung disease. The week of my 26th birthday, uh, I had a biopsy done, and they then concluded that I had interstitial lung disease. They didn't know how I got it uh, because it's not common. In someone they don't know what caused it. So they said that I had this and that I had six months to live. And I was like, what? No. You're lying. Like, you're driven. I'm not going anywhere. And I think that that's why I'm here still. Because why I never I'm here believe, still. Because I had six months. Believe, um, I had six months. Um, I was in the hospital for eight months. Had a series of things happen to me. I had to learn to walk and stand all over again. I was on a ventilator. Well, couldn't walk, couldn't stand. Um, I was sent to USC. After being evaluated there, they basically told me no, that we're not gonna transplant you, and you're gonna die. And I was like, okay, uh, but I went you. home and I just next. I was like, okay, well, whatever comes next. One of my dear friends, Mr. Miles Thompson, um, he's a nurse. He called UCSD. I don't really even know what he said to them, but within a couple of weeks, I had an appointment to go see one of their lead doctors there. So I went to San Diego, and he was like, okay, well, we're not going to say no, but you're fat. And I was like, thank you. I know. So what do you want me to do? Because I'm on steroids and I'm on all these meds that are just keeping weight on my body and I can't exercise, I can't do anything, so what do you want me to do? So he's like, I don't want to hear it if I seen your fat ass to Ethiopia, you lose weight, and I was like, wow, I really don't like you. And he told me, but he told me, you do what I tell you to do and you listen and you will get new lungs. So for a year I went and saw him and this past January 10th, 2012, I was officially listed for double lung transplant at UC. In September I was given a year window. With this disease, what it is, is it's basically a hardening. My lungs, lungs have lost their elasticity. So I had about 30% lungs back in 2009. Now uh, I've declined somewhat. With this disease, you sort of stabilize and then you decline. Like, and you stabilize again and then you decline. So I've been declining. And they gave me a year window, which in, the thing with that is in order to be transplanted, you have to be sick enough to where they say, okay, you need a transplant, but then you have to be well enough to survive a transplant. So you can't be too sick or else they won't transplant you. And they gave me a window of a year and that was in September. Um, I'm not worried about that because God touched the universe all the time. And in my mind, I have March. I don't know why March has been standing out to me since September, but I believe it's going to be March. So yeah mark my words mark my words is it mark or mock i don't know anyways do that um yeah i'm just waiting i'm on 15 uh, i'm sorry 15 liters of oxygen 24 7 i'm on this little 50 foot situation right here and uh it might sound weird but something that has literally taken my life has saved has my life. saved my life um, my life has been so enriched. I know the meaning of life. I know what it is to actually love and have gratitude and be thankful and no longer take simple brushing your teeth, standing up and taking a shower. It takes like an hour just to shower. So it's and really hard. And I have two kids that want to see me run and play with them and sing and laugh and swim and beat me up and I want to do all that factor. I can't get sick. I've already been hospitalized once with pneumonia. That was fun. Um, but I can't really go anywhere. I can't risk my health because every little cold or uh, uh is detrimental to my health. So I'm at home and I'm waiting. Um, a lot of people look at me and they're like, How are you so happy? And how are you so, you know, positive? And it's like, I'm so happy to be here, like I'm just here. I want an extraordinary life and I know that I will have one. But um, for right now, I gotta take what I can get. And I look forward and I look at every positive thing and 
My life is so, I'm so blessed. My family have a wonderful, wonderful support system. My mother is, like, there's no way She's taken like on my lady. whole life so that I can be here. And I have my children here with me. And my family, my grandparents, my uncle, my brother, my little brother is so amazing to me. Like, he keeps me going so much. And in a way, he's so much of my spirit because he never stops trying to better himself. He's and making himself like, better. He's never satisfied. And to me, you're not ever supposed to be satisfied because you can always be better. And that's what I look at as I want to be better. You want to help me? You want to help someone like me in my shoes? Become a donor. All you have to do is go to donatelife.org. I think that's it. And register, or you can register with your local DMV. You don't even have to go into the driver, uh, take your driver's license into the DMV anymore. Once you're registered, you just are in the system. So, should you be in an accident or anything and pass, they swipe your information and you're a donor. And you save eight lives. Every donor can save and change up to eight lives. So, you can become a donor. You can tell people to become donors. Um, you can do one last amazing, phenomenal thing when you go out of this world, and that is to give life. So, please do so. Go to donatelife.org and give someone else a chance to live, breathe, and succeed.